Good morning, everyone. It is 11 o'clock, which is the time that we had set to start our webinar this morning. Let me know if you can hear me. You can type in in the chat box. I just want to make sure that everyone has their audio before I really get started. You can also raise your hand in GoToWebinar. Okay, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jacqueline and Emma. Okay, great. It looks like audio is working fine, but I do notice that out of about the 40 that we had signed up, I'm only seeing about 20. So if you can just bear with me, I'm going to wait about a minute or two to see if we can get some of those other people in here. While we're waiting, I also want you to know that we are recording So good morning, everyone. If you don't already know, my name is Victoria Lopez, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for our Texas Homeless Network Client Track 15 webinar hosted by myself and Stephanie Valderrama, who is also with us here today. Dear agencies, we're very soon going to implement the new Client Track 15, and today we would just like to do a brief overview of what you need to know to log into our training environment. Our training environment is a simulated environment that has all the features that client and track the real environment has, but in a conducive environment where you can practice creating enrollments, adding services, referrals, bed check-ins, and even creating reports. So you may ask, what do I need to do to get started in this training environment? Well, we have sent all the HMIS administrators for the agency a letter with information as it follows. The login will be used using this email address, excuse me, this URL, clienttrack.net backslash TXBOS HMIS underscore training. Yes, that sounds very similar to the email address, excuse me, the website you use to log into your real environment. You'll notice that it's the same, only with an underscore and the word training at the end. If you are new to Client Track HMIS, you may need to send us an email and request a password. If you have been with Client Track HMIS one year or longer, you may already have access to the training environment. And in this case, if it's been a few years, you may have forgotten your password to the training environment. And you may also email us at hmis at thn.org, and we would be glad to reset your password for you. Please realize that uh, when you do get an email from us saying password reset, this is not resetting the password for the real environment. This is only resetting the password for the training environment. After you log in, you will be prompted to change your password. What you do in the training environment does not affect the client track 13.6 that you're currently using this month to do your day-to-day -day routine operations. A commonly asked question may be, where do I go for help when I notice the differences in Client Track 15? Well, we would like you to first access our training guide so that we can receive feedback and improve our guide. And we would also like you to uh, use the help function inside Client Track and submit tickets via the Client Track help and support system. This is very similar to what some of you do. Uh, on a weekly basis when you submit us questions in the current client track that you're using by going up to help in the upper right hand corner and clicking submit an issue.
You may be curious to know uh, what is going to happen after this one month trial period in the training environment is over. We will be asking all participants to complete a short two-part survey online. The first part will be questions called checking for understanding and you will be giving these questions with the training guide and you make them on the answers during the course of this month. At the end of the month, you can then copy your answers into our online Google survey. And once this is completed, you'll receive your credentials for the live environment. Once again, I just want to thank you for your participation today. If you have not received a copy of the training guide for the training environment from your HMIS admin administrator, please email us at hmis at thn.org and I would be glad to email you that new training guide today. Again, thank you for your participation. Uh, there's no set amount of time or hours or logins needed to participate. We understand that you'll be participating at, as your workload permits. However, we do um, suggest that you create a fictitious dummy client and you do try these four operations creating an enrollment, exiting a client, adding services, and checking a client into a bed. With that being said, we are now going to start the actual demonstration. And for that, we'll go back to Victoria Lopez. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. So, okay, folks, this is the moment that we have all been waiting for, and I am actually very excited to show you what Client Track 15 has for us. Now, I know that a lot of you, or some of you, I should say, some of you have already requested um, login information for the training site, so I know some of you have already seen this, but I just want to take a moment for the people who haven't seen this before to sort of acclimate yourself to what client track 15 looks like because it does look different i mean there are definitely some cosmetic differences but even though client track 15 looks different i don't want you to feel or think that it acts any differently than what you're already used to because that's not the case client track 15 still functions in the same way that you're used to. So one thing that you might notice right away is that our interaction pane here at the center, the place where you input your data or sift through your data is a lot larger here than it is in our training site now. The reason for this is client track has decided to manually collapse our menu pane here on the side. So let's go ahead and maximize that. Let's show the menu. And here we have our reports and my client track like we're used to. So just to demonstrate that client track um, really does function the same way as usual. Let's take a look at this report. So I know a lot of you have run reports and this is going to look very familiar to you. So all of the reports, the forms, the intake, all of that is going to look the same. It's just the framework here that looks different. It's the cosmetic design, in other words. So I don't know about the rest of you, but for me at least, I'm actually really used to having that menu pane show up on the left-hand side. I like it when it's there. So we can go ahead and show the menu again and click on the little pin icon, and that's going to ensure that our menu stays pinned here on the left, regardless of what other menu options we pick. So another thing that's different that I actually think is going to be really useful, Client Track has introduced pagination. So for a lot of you who have been working with Client Track for a long time, you'll know that when you have a large set of data, over 200 records, Client Track will only show you the first 200 records. So when you're looking for a client that has um, a very common last name, for example, you might come up with more than 200 um, 
records or when you're searching through providers, you might notice that we have a lot more than 200. So client track in our live environment makes you change your filters to narrow down that number. Client track 15 allows you to look at all of the records by using pagination. So I think that's going to be really useful. Let me go ahead and unpin this so we have a little bit more space to look at here. So another thing you might have already noticed is that we don't have any tabs here at the top. Client track has introduced what they call workspaces. And the workspaces have, in essence, you know, um, replaced the tabs. So right now, we are in the home space currently. So let's go ahead and click on what they're calling the carousel button. And what that takes us to is the workspace carousel. So the workspaces here are very, very similar to the tabs that we are used to. So we have the home tab, we have the clients tab, the shelter tab, as well as the providers. So if you, um, if you as a user do not have the shelter work group, you will not see the shelter workspace. But one of the things that I do like about workspaces is that they have um, what I would say the most used options over here on the right hand side. So if I were to search for a client, I could automatically go and find the client instead of having to actually go into the workspace and manually selecting the find client option on its own. Let's go ahead and do a search and see, I just wanted to demonstrate again, oh, well, I only have 154 records, but you'll have to trust me on this one. If you had more than 200, you would see the pagination here up at the top that would let you scroll through all of those records. So let's go back to the client dashboard. So we're in the client's workspace right now. The client dashboard, again, looks very similar. You're already used to what this looks like. Client track has made navigating through family members a lot easier. You can also go directly to a client's case notes. Okay. What else? Another thing that Client Track has made more prominent here is the notifications. So, for example, you see this really large bell up near the client's name, and you can set your notification very easily. Let's say I want to remember to document her file. And let's see, it's going to be a medium priority begin date today, and let's say that it is new. And we'll save that, and Client Track is going to give me that notification, and it's going to stay there very prominently until I remember to click back and change that status to acknowledged. Now, I know as a user, I personally don't use notifications very often, but I think that since it's so prominent here, it's going to be a lot easier to set those and really get a lot of use out of them. Okay, another thing, and this is actually one of my personal favorites that Client Track has introduced, is the concept of personalization. So Client Track now allows you to set your favorite options and to save them on the side of the menu bar here. Let's go back to the home workspace. So I can demonstrate this. Let's say that I run a few reports pretty consistently. Almost every time I enter a new client, I want to run the client demographics report. Now you can save this report to your favorites by clicking on the little star icon. And when you hover over it, it will say add to favorites. So that's another thing. Client Track has a lot of what we call help text. If you just leave your if you just leave your mouse hovering over an icon, you'll probably get a little help text that'll tell you what exactly is happening when you click it. So let's click on Add to Favorites, and let's put it in a 
new folder. I know it says new container, but I'm going to call this favorite reports. And I'm going to save that. And we're going to see that favorite show up under our user dashboard. Let's say I want a, another one. Let's say I always run the service report and I look at clients served. So I'm going to do the same thing, add to clients. And let's see, this is going to be under demographics and I'll save that. Actually, let's go ahead and manage these because I don't really like the way that it looks. So I'm going to set these up in a new container and I know that I already did this so I'm not really sure why it's not showing the way that I want, but let's say I'm going to put it in my favorites. Of course, I practice this a lot before I uh, before I started. So, of course, client track picks this moment too. So, another thing is client track has been working very hard on adding a lot of icons. So, let's say I want to make sure that my favorites stand out. So, I'll add a little heart there and save that. And now we have our favorites on the side and it will go directly to those reports when I click on them. Now the favorites are specifically unique to you. No other user will be able to see those favorites. And they're also unique to the workspace. So for example, if I were to go back to the client's workspace, those favorites disappear. So that gives you a little bit more leeway when you're creating your favorites. So you're not exactly bogged down here on the side with all of them. Okay. One of the newest features, and I think this is the feature that client track is particularly excited about, is the idea of global search. So in our live environment, the way that client track is currently set up, you'll probably notice that there is a search bar on every tab. And you can use that search bar to search that specific menu. Client track's new global search works a little differently in that you can look for anything, and I do mean anything in the system from whatever workspace that you're on. So let's say I'm on the I'm currently on the client's workspace and I've just put input a client and I want to run a specific report, but I'm not exactly sure what that report is called. I'm kind of new. I'm not exactly um, sure what that name of the report is, but I do know that it, it does have enrollments in it. And I know that it's a report. So when I search for that, oh, well, client track says that, don't do this to me, client track. Okay, so we have current enrollments here, and let's see, and this is on the home tab, but it's still not showing exactly what I want. So let's say, let's try reports instead. Okay, this is a lot better. Let me think about this. Program reports, enrollment demographics, that's the report that I'm looking for. And it'll take me from the client's workspace and drop me on the home workspace and put me right into that report. Now you can also use this not just to search for menu options, you can actually use the global search to look for clients. So let's say I'm looking for a specific client and I do know that her last name ends with Cheka. Okay, so I have three instances of Cheka here. All right, this is Michael Cheka. This is Sophia Cheka. She's the one I'm looking for. And when I click that, it will put me directly onto her dashboard, as well as moving me at the same time back into the client's workspace. And again, it, it's also useful for searching for particular menu options, not just reports and clients. Let's say I want to add a new provider, but I'm not exactly sure where to go to that. Oh, okay, here we go. It gives me that menu option and it'll take me right into that workflow once I click it.
So for me, at least, this is um, very user friendly. Um, you don't exactly have to put the exact wording. If you are looking for reports, you don't have to have the exact name of the report. You can just type in report or services and client truck will pull up or should pull up all instances um, of where services occur in the system. Okay, and actually that reminds me of one more thing that I would like to point out. So you've probably noticed that our icons here do look a little different. So instead of the green and red circular arrows, we now have these little boxy, I don't even know what you would call them, but they're different. They're different than what we're used to. So let's go ahead and look at what an intake looks like now. And again, the actual process itself is very similar. That hasn't changed. But I do want to draw your attention to the left-hand side. So usually when you're doing an intake, you have this intake box at the very, very top left, and it's very tiny and out of the way. And it, to me at least, it doesn't help you along in the process. So Client Track has kind of put that front and center. So you know exactly what page you're on and what pages you've completed. And it also makes the pause the workflow and cancel the workflow icons a bit more prominent, which I appreciate. Okay, so that is essentially client track 15. Now there is one other thing and it's very minor. Um, when you are changing work groups, I know a lot of you have multiple work groups, more than one. So instead of settings up here, what you'll see is your own name. And when you click on that, it'll drop down a little box that'll give you your organization, your location, and your work group. So this is where you would change your work groups instead of the regular settings. Going to apply that. Now, this does look a little different. This is what the end result is going to look like. We haven't exactly formatted each of the work groups to look the same, but in the end, before we completely roll out, all of the work groups are going to have the client ID displayed very prominently at the top, which if you're like me and you have squinty eyes and you wear glasses a lot, that's a lot easier to see than what we currently have in client track 13 in our live environment. Okay, so we are running pretty good on time here. We have about three minutes for questions. And I would love to take any questions that you guys have. It can be about the rollouts. If I didn't cover something in the demonstration that you would like to see, please let me know. Don't be shy, guys. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you joining us for our... Oh, okay. Let's see. We have one more. We have a couple of questions here. When will the update go live for all users? That is a very good question. So currently... We do not have a specific date, but we are looking towards the middle of July. There are still a couple of things that we want to format in our training environment, and we also want to give users more time to sort of play around in the environment. Linda is asking, do we just email you for a training password? Yes. If you want um, login information for the training environment, go ahead and email hmis at thn.org and we'll go ahead and get you set up. You might receive an email from Client Track that's saying, hey, just to let you know, your password has been reset. Don't worry, that's actually us setting up your new password for the training environment, and that does not affect your live environment password. 
Anything else that I can help you guys with? Okay, well, thank you again for joining us. If you think of any more questions, please feel free to um, email our HMIS at THN.org email and we'll get you set up and good to go. I hope you have a great day.